Yes, he all went pear shaped wrong two years ago. Didn't he? he started off with a win, looked really good, got got trounced by Dynast at Cheltenham over two and a half miles, which wouldn't have been his trip, and then then had a long time off before coming back with the, the wins in the spring. Uh, I think the mark is perfectly reasonable. I thought he looked all right. You know, he didn't knock my eye out, but he looked OK. OK. Um, and then we've got the Druid's nephew, who, for whom Jonathan was making a case in Mark Your Card. He has shown improved form since going to Neil Mulholland, winning on his seasonal debut. And you were having another look at his run last time out, which is a career best anyway, but um, you were having an, a closer look at it last time out at Cheltenham. Yeah, well, he did tank through the Cheltenham race, and he, he, he almost as if he got surprised by... Uh, Sam Winner, who was never going, suddenly picking up and going by him three out, and then he was giving unavailing chase, but 25 lengths back to everything else. He moves through the race like a dream. He's, you know, he, he's going to go up for that in future handicaps. He's extremely well in here, and he ought to run a blinder, I hope. Yes. I don't know what's there going on. There seems to be fireworks going off here, at the uh, it? It could be. Could... Part of the Hennessy build-up? I hope not. Mm. Right, and then there's many clouds. He's an interesting performer, but he's been raised for that uh, win at uh, Carlisle last time. But they are going to parade for this Grade 3 Hennessy Gold Cup chase, and Hublon des Obo for Aidan Coleman and Venetia Williams is horse number one, and he was sixth in the race last year. He unseated in the Bet365 Gold Cup last time we saw him. His very best form is at Ascot, but he'll like the cut in the ground. There is Trio Delen, who won this race last year, and... Uh, uh, he won this race last year, who pulled up in the Grand National, and uh, we haven't seen him since then. He'd possibly prefer uh, even better ground than this. Uh, the horse number three is Rocky Creek for Sam Twiston Davis and Paul Nichols, who's second in this race last year. is wearing a tongue tie for the first time, and we'll find out today whether he can finish off his race. Ballin Gore next, seasonal debut for him. He's been a very consistent and very good horse last season, at grade one level on his final two starts, and uh, he is a very capable horse at his best. There is Smad Place, who we've seen twice placed in the World Hurdle, second in the RSA chase. He's got a very solid chance in today's event. There's Fingal Bay for Philip Hobbs and Richard Johnson. Richard Johnson seeking a four-timer on the card and Fingal Bay uh, resuming his chasing career. There's Vino Griego, quite a character, much loved by uh, National Hunt enthusiasts, representing Jamie Moore and Gary Moore. He ran quite well on his first start at Ascot. Many Clouds represents Oliver Sherwood and Leighton Aspel. This horse was a little bit unfortunate last season. He's still open to further improvement and could be a major player here. Union East, Paul Nichols wonders whether he might just come on for the run a little bit, but other than that, everything is in place for him to run well. Then we've got Mon Beg Jude, who can be prone to errors. He was below form at the end of last season, but it was a good start to his season last time out. Anna Cotti is a front runner. Hopefully he won't go off too strongly. He won the Grade 1 Felton Chase last Christmas. Then we have Wata Warrior, who's an improved four horse in two starts for Dan Skelton. Could he improve again? He's also a potential front runner. Then we've got Jack Adam, who's been talked about as a potential chance. Cheltenham Gold Cup winner. If he is, he's going to have to prove himself here today. Jonathan Neeson feels that he'll improve for the run. Then we have number 14, the Druid's nephew, an improved horse for Neil Mulholland and a really good second at Cheltenham last time and a horse that could improve again in today's contest. Then we've got Witchwood's Brook, who won a, a Grade 2 handicap chase at Haydock last January, fell there in the Grand National Tile and has started his season over hurdles. Midnight Prayer was the winner at the Cheltenham Festival over four miles, a really good stayer and he will like the conditions. Then we've got via Sundown, who put up a career best performance in February when winning a novice chase, and he didn't need to be at his best at Exeter previously. There's Larev, who's wearing the cheek pieces, he's won at Sundown, he might be a little bit better right-handed, a slightly patchy profile. And finally, we have Mary King, who made his start at Ascot, finishing third behind What a Warrior. He was fourth in the Scottish Grand National at the back end of last season. He's going to have to find a little bit more to figure against less exposed horses in this event. Now, you were just gesticulating about something about Trier de Laine. I was giving some panic notes. I mean, yeah, the, the Trier de Laine, the ground is an issue, but he looked in really good order, I thought, given the, especially given it's his first run of the season. Rocky Creek always impresses and did again. I thought Hubon de Zobo, first run of the season, he looked fit to me. Uh, Fina Griego looked well at Ascot, he looks well again. You just love him. No, you're I, trying to make it up yeah, to him. That's I all know. And, uh, and what a worry I thought looked in you know they were the, they were my paddock picks okay uh, before we had the parade we we're just about to talk about many clouds we were I I didn't mention this earlier but I did have a question mark about how he'll get on in big a big field because his chasing runs have come in 
single figure fields, very small single figure fields. So he, he does have to sort of prove that he'll cope with the Hurley and Burley. But I mean, he's the right type of horse. Mm -hmm. You know, that second season chaser on the up that, that sort of people tend to look for and often win the race. Harry King's got quite a prominent position in the market, hasn't he? 14 to 1. He has, hasn't he? Yes. He's, um... I mean, he ran pretty well on his seasonal debut at Ascot. He did run well uh, behind What a Warrior. He surprised me then. I thought he ran extremely well. He's got a whole shoal of really good efforts. I know he's, he's broken a blood vessel at least once. Um, if it turns into an absolute slog, that, that brings him into the argument, doesn't it? And they're putting the cheek pieces on as well. Yeah, they, he has. Back on. Yes, it worn them uh, at Cheltenham in March last year. Paul Nichols was warning that Uniast might, to some degree, need the run, and he, he was pointing out there are a couple of the horses that he cited that yeah. would do that have actually won, but he just making the point that he can be fitter than today. I, I thought he looked all right. I didn't, didn't think he looked too bad at all, and that is a very taking performance when he when he stormed past wishful thinking at Aintree last, last year, but this time last year, when he just suddenly looked all about stamina. And... You know, I, I, the, tra you know, the trainer's obviously hoping for Rocky Creek, but you don't. top trainers don't run two in the race and the second one's just there to say hello. Mm, absolutely not, and the conditions should really very much suit. Um, I quite thought that Anacotti could potentially win a good race. The blinkers are, are back on. He's a, a grade one winner. Um, he shaped OK on his debut. He did, and he'll be one of the pace angles along with What a Warrior. They're coming forward for the Hennessy Gold Cup Chase 2014. Let's join Ian Bartlett, who has the all-important commentary. He started walking over to his steps. Uh, runners are in line walking up towards him now. Moving forward. Flag is up. Start is ready. They're off. Racing then for the Hennessy Gold Cup. 21 fences to jump. What a warrior, Anna Cotti, Mary King, and Rocky Creek with Midnight Prayer amongst the leaders as they come to number one, which they're all over safely. Bally Nagore was the back marker. The second is the first of the ditches, the yellow jacket of What a Warrior going through to lead. Anna Cotti with him, and they've set off at a really good gallop. They're well ahead of the others already. Bally Nagore via Sundown, Unionista uh, Trio de Len, and the Druid's nephew towards the the back of the field with Monbeg Dude as they come down to number three. Le Rev has moved through there into third position from a dark blue jacket of Midnight Prayer. Vino Griego in the light blue is right up on the outside of runners as they move down to number four. Anna Cotti got in a bit close, breasted it, was up and over safely. To the yellow of Water Warrior in second place. They just settle a little bit in front now. Le Rev uh, is next behind them. Jack Adam is in the pink jacket, not far behind the leaders. Mary King and Midnight Prayer and Rocky Creek are chasing the leading group of runners as well. Fingal Bay is out wide on the course. Another with him in light blue, Vino Griego. They're the two deepest on the track as they come to the end of the back straights. Rocky Creek, uh, red and white on the sleeves. Last year's runner-up is in company with the nose-bounded Many Clouds as they swing left-handed for the first time, heading on towards the cross fence, which is number six. Ublon de Zobo and Witchwoods uh, Brook are right up on the outside from Monbeg Dude. Smad Place is in company with those. Trio de Len is now one of the back markers in company with Bally Nagore. Also, they are sundown as they get over the cross fence uh, where it was the Jewett's nephew who belted that really hard and he drops now to be the back marker. Home turn the first time. What a warrior. Won both of his starts this season. Harry Skelton just sets the gallop. Larev has moved through into second place. Cheek pieces. It's a blue and yellow jacket for Dougie Costello. It's also blue and yellow for Anna Cody and Gavin Sheehan, who's now dropped into third place. Midnight Prayer is behind those dark blue and beige colours. And then uh, comes Fingal Bay in light blue as they come over this. They were all safe there. They head down now to the second of the open ditches, number eight coming up. Off towards the left of the leading 
group, the red of Ublon de Zobo, the green colours of Mary King is with him, many clouds, the nose band is with those, and then Rocky Creek. Jack Adam hugging the rails, Ruby Walsh, very light colours, going OK in mid-division at this stage. Vino Griego and Witchwoods Brook, the next couple of runners as they take another plain fence. Union Nist and Bally Nagore via Sundown and Montbeg Dude were next. Trio de Len with that group as well from Rocky Creek and then Drew, its nephew, made an error earlier on, given time to get back into it. He's on the extreme left as they come now over this next plane one. All safe at it. The water jump coming up now. So halfway in the Hennessy, fence number 11, they approach. Le Rev is nearest to us. On the far side is Water Warrior. They're leading by three or four lengths to Anacotti in third place. And then comes Midnight Prayer and Fingal Bay and Ublon de Zobo and the Green of Mary King. And with those, Jack Adam and Witchwoods Brook. And they're followed through by Many Clouds, Vino Griego and Smad Place and Union East and Bally Nagora and Mombeg Dude. And Rocky Creek just ridden along a bit, followed by Trio de on the inside of Via Sundown. And the Druid's nephew is the back marker. So away they go onto the far side, having completed a circuit. And it's still... Pace setting Water Warrior and Le Rev, who race on to the first on the far side, number 12, together. Anna Cotti behind them in third. Fingal Bay is in fourth place from Ublon de Zoba. Anna Cotti was slow at that one. Here's another ditch. Midnight Prayer and Jack Adam making progress on the inside from Many Clouds and Merry King. Smad Place quietly getting into it. Vino Griego's behind these as they come over this open ditch. And Trio de Lens at the back with Via Sundown, the Druid's nephew, Union East, has dropped back through the field as well. Now the red of Ublon de Zobo come up on the outside of the light blue of Fingal Bay. There with Water Warrior, the leaders, as they take this next plain fence. In behind them is Mary King, Witchwoods Brook, Many Clouds. Uh, then the Druid's nephew, belted one early on, gone wide on the course, though, making progress towards the leaders. Jacques Adam is, what, three or four lengths off the lead, about sixth or seventh place at this stage. They run down with only one more to take in the back straight now, so they're six from the finish in the Hennessy. Ublon de Zobo is just the leader to Mary King, Fingal Bay, Le Rev, what a warrior struggling. Jack Adam, many clouds right in behind them. Midnight Prayer is there. Trio de Lens running on a little bit. The Druid's nephew right on the outside. Bally Nagore and Smad Place are there, going okay as well. They're about to turn left-handed, so they're now beginning their journey back towards home and the winning post. Ublon de Zobo in the red jacket. Aidan Coleman is leading. Le Rev is in second place. Mary King, AP McCoy looking for a first Hennessy in the green colours showing in third place. Many Clouds is right in behind those nose banded. The pink jacket is Jacques Adam. Fingal Bay has dropped out. Midnight Prayer is making progress. The Druid's nephew on the extreme left is coming into it now as well. Heading round towards the home turn. What a warrior has completely dropped out. Jacques Adam is fifth at the moment. Four lengths off the lead. The lead though is Ublon de Zobo. He's got four fences to take. Moving through into second position as they turn in on the right with the nose band is Many Clouds. And that is Lake Naspel coming with a challenge. Jack Adam is ridden along now. Mary King is in third place. Smad Place, the grey on the right, begins to run on a bit. Druid's nephew on the left is there with a chance. Here's the final ditch. Ublon de Zobo and Aidan Coleman in front. Many Clouds on the right is in second place. The Rev is pulled up as they jump this. So the Druid's nephew in fourth. Mary King was ahead of him in third. Jack Adam, Smad Place, Mon big dude behind those and then midnight prayer Ublon de Zobo uh, comes to the second last with a two length lead second position for the nose band in many clouds the third Mary King AP looking for a first Hennessy is coming through in the center of them these three have the Hennessy between them as they come to the final fence now and it's just many clouds who's over in front Mary King is within striking distance the red jacket of Ublon de Zobo nearest to us still has a chance many Many Clouds and Leighton Aspel in front. A hundred yards to go. He leads by over a length. It's Many Clouds now and Leighton Aspel in front. And they're going to win the Hennessy in the colours of Trevor Hemmings. In second place, Ublon de Zobo. Mary King was third. Mombeg Dude holds fourth from Smart Place. And behind those was Union East and the Druid's nephew. Gutsy effort from Many Clouds to win. Uh, a really, really good renewal of the Hennessy. He's returned at 8-1. to one. He's given Oliver Sherwood a second Hennessy. Trevor Hemmings, the winning owner. Leighton Aspel uh, carrying on from uh, the crest of a